We've been lucky to pull you away from filming and you've been up since four in the morning. What's it like to be a part of a film so important and for the in-house community today? Yeah. Well, I think one of the most important things to me about being part of this this project was maintaining authenticity and being able to tell a story that uh, normally I wouldn't have any business understanding. Um, and I think that's what should appeal so much to the audience, too, that we're targeting here is is a sort of level of empathy for a situation that you might not normally be privy to. How people go about getting their food and how people go about finding heat in different places in, in this country specifically when they are uh, experiencing homelessness. And can you talk about like being so immersed within the unhoused community while filming, what, what has been the takeaway for you from this? Yeah. Well, I was definitely more familiar with the homeless community in Chicago, my hometown um, of Chicago, before I became more involved with um, the studies that they were doing for the documentary for No Address here in Sacramento. Um, and I noticed some key differences in the way that people go about sourcing their food, their warmth, the shelter, um, that were very noticeable. But there's a universal theme here um, that, that no matter what the, the reason is that people become homeless, there is a sort of level of, of necessity in community in supporting one another. And oftentimes there is uh, terminology that we've heard being used that these people are displaced not homeless, that a home could mean so many different things to so many different people, and that developing a family on the street might not be as different as developing your chosen family when you have a home, um, as we think it might be. Um, that human necessity for connection mm -hmm. is, is still there. Um, and that's something that we really want to be able to relate heavily to the people who might walk by someone on the street without a second glance, without thinking twice about what they're going through. Um, that they might be experiencing comparable human emotions to their own. And then putting a film like this on the map for people to see, and then we have like the governor of California not that long ago launching this tiny homes to try and help alleviate the situation. W what do you think this film will do to help that also? Yeah. Well, I think ultimately what this, this, the aim of this film is, is not necessarily to preach a solution, more so to, to bring empathy and awareness to the issue, which I personally think is more effective of a uh, approach. Because when you go about telling people how we should be doing things, oftentimes it's not going to relate so heavily to, to, to their desires, their um, views on how things should be handled. But if you allow them to look at the data, look at at the facts and see truly how people are living this way and why, then they can generate a level of empathy that might bring them to make their own choices about what to do about it. How to, I mean, how to just treat an individual who you might walk by on the way to the train every morning or something like that, you know? Um, let alone what it might do along the, the line for people actually getting involved with organizations and, and maybe smaller towns and, and cities developing centers to support people for rehabilitation purposes and housing. And creating a new thought process for everybody, essentially, right? Yeah, it, it is a sort of a rewiring that mm -hmm. would be needed to be done in order to accommodate um, the, the infrastructure that would support these people. And so Sacramento has kind of become a hotspot for production and filming. How have you enjoyed Sacramento? So Sacramento has treated me pretty well so far. Um, I, I've done, you know, a few of the touristy things, old Sacramento and, and things like that. But for the most part, we've been working close to 12 hour days every day, every, you know, five days a week, most of the time. So it's been, um, it's been a heavy workload for the whole time I've been here. Um, but uh, I actually um, constructed a tiny home of my own and drove it out here uh, and that's what I'm living in while I'm out here. So I have a pretty unique living situation as I'm, I'm living on one of the wineries in Clarksburg oh, wow. uh, in a little tiny house that I have been spending the past two years working on. So affordable housing and sustainable living is something that's very important to me. That's something that I uh, focus on in my personal time as well. Um, so that's, uh, that's sort of one of the approaches I was bringing into this film is sort of the idea of, uh, of, of spreading the message that you can live in comfort and you can take care of yourself uh, without needing to spend a ton of money, without needing to hurt the environment as well. So it's sort of a, there's a, there's a, a symbiosis to find here. There's a balance, you know, between living in luxury and, and, and what I, um, 
what the Buddhists would call walking the middle path. You know, not jumping into the suffering of the world and experiencing it so that you are so engulfed that you cannot see outside of it and not sheltering yourself away from it so much that you are blind to it, but walking that middle path of understanding of both extremes.